Greetings and welcome. We turn now back to our ACT grammar prep lectures uh, for uh, the uh, English uh, usage section of the ACT. Uh, this is lecture number 10, uh, the final lecture in a series uh, on ACT grammar prep. We've covered already major areas in grammar study that you might see on the ACT. Now it's time for what we would say maybe a review of the time, all right? Uh, but before we do that, uh, let's talk about the other two areas of the ACT that you will see when you take the ACT, the reading section and the writing section. So I would write that down, ACT prep reading section and writing section, all right? The reading section, let's start with first. The reading section of the ACT is notorious for causing students problems, no question, right? Uh, part of the reason for this, I mentioned in an earlier lecture, is students have a tendency to run out of time. Okay, let's talk about the reading section for a second. The reading test, four passages, write it down, four passages of 40 questions, 35 minutes to complete it. Do the quick math, right? That's about an average of 10 questions, right, per passage, not quite 10 minutes for each passage. Woo! So basically you gotta read and you gotta answer these questions in that allotted time you're going to see four different types or genres of reading from the subject areas. Let's list them, shall we, for your notes. One, you're gonna see a passage from the social sciences. Sometimes this section is referred to as the social studies section because it's kind of the stuff you study in social studies class, right? Everything from geography to anthropology, it can include political science, it can include psychology, okay? Number two, the second kind of reading that you're going to see in the reading section of the ACT, reading section, is natural science. All right. Now this is the chance to show that you can read in the areas of science that you've studied in high school, everything from biology to chemistry to physics. All right. The third section is the prose fiction section. Okay, here you have an excerpt from a novel or a short story. By the way, make a note, this can often be written in the first person narrative style, so the pronoun I and me get used here. By the way, you normally almost never see a poem in this section, okay? Finally, the fourth section is the humanities section. This is something that comes from a personal essay or memoirs. The writing can be on topics of broad range from architecture and ethics to film and philosophy, all right? Now that's a challenge, right? No question. Go back to what I said already about learning how to read under timed conditions. You must be practicing reading for information in all of your high school core classes. It's an important suggestion here right from the start, right? One of the questions about taking this section, the reading section, is what order to work in. Some students will select the section of the four they like the best or strongest in, knock that out first. Others will start with the hardest section first. So for example, if they don't feel strong in the sciences, that's where they actually begin, all right? I'm not, I'm not gonna give you um, a single way to work through this section, all right? The approaches vary. But this is why you must practice the reading section of the ACT if you wanna improve your score. I will say this, you must learn to actively read or annotate the passages on at least three levels. Now this should sound familiar to you if you're a student in 303, but let's review it nonetheless. When you are reading any of these four passages, you will be reading on three different levels, right? A level one read means that you summarize each paragraph in the overall passage. You wanna pay particular attention to topic sentences and of course, the conclusion paragraph, right? Right there in the booklet itself, you want to be summarizing what you're reading from these passages. A level two reading, of course, is going to focus on rhetorical parts of the reading. Not what the writer says, but how the writer says it right. All the stuff you're learning basically in English class, okay? A level three reading, of course, means that you try to relate personally somehow to the reading. I've often told my students that I will know they did a good job on this section of the reading section of the ACT. If days after taking the ACT, they can still tell me that they remember what the four passages on the ACT reading section were actually about. 
In other words, they remember it that long after the test. That is proof that they were reading at the third level. They somehow related to that information. In other words, another way to say this maybe for your notes is simply this. When you read the four passages, try and learn at least one thing you didn't know before. If you approach the reading that way with a level of excitement energy, then you will actually read better, annotate better. Of course, a final suggestion here is to monitor your time wisely. Don't focus so much on one or two of the four passages that you fail to finish. One of the biggest problems. Of course, this section is usually going to be provided to you as one of the last ones of the ACT when you already are mentally drained because it's, a, as we said already in earlier lectures, a three-hour reading test, right? The other section of the ACT that most of you will be doing is the writing test, okay? Now, let's talk about this for a moment. At the end of the ACT, you take this writing test, usually four to six paragraphs, right? You have 40 minutes to write the essay. 40 minutes, that is it. It's a timed writing. You need to have some experience on planning and outlining an essay quickly and then revising and editing a little bit after you finish writing your essay. The most important thing is to be sure that you understand what it is you're being asked to do in the prompt. In other words, write this down. You need to be able to annotate the prompt so that you understand what it is you're asked to write on. By the way, speaking of writing, your penmanship here is important as well. Can you write legibly under timed conditions? If you've not practiced timed writings, you need to do that as you get ready to take the ACT writing section. You'll be asked to express an opinion and then defend that opinion. I'll say that again. This is a persuasive argumentative essay. You're going to be asked to express an opinion and defend that opinion after looking at three different perspectives shared in the question prompt. You must be able to state clearly what your position is, right, right there in your thesis. And this is really, in my estimation, where most students lose their points on the ACT writing section. They have a vague thesis. It's not clear what their position is. And their topic sentences ruin their vague topic sentences, ruin their essay as well. Okay. Also, finally, let's just say it since this is a series of lectures on grammar uh, prep, the way that you can use formal grammar rules, English formal standard grammar rules, will have a huge um, um, decision on whether you make good points or not because the readers obviously are looking to see if you have command of the language, all right? So let's finish now uh, this lecture by talking about the 24 areas very quickly where most students really struggle on the ACT. In some ways, this lecture now will be a review of the last nine lectures. As you take notes, if you feel like you're still unclear about certain areas of the test, go back and review the lectures I've already given. So, let's set up, focus, take some good notes here as we get ready to, uh, to, to finish our series of lectures. Right? I'm not going to focus a lot of detail here. Um, I've already done that, obviously, in the other lectures. Okay? I'm just going to review what you must know to be ready to score well in the ACT. So let's go to it. If you're taking notes, you might number 1 through 24. At 14, I'm going to actually give two an A and a B section. And all I'm going to do is just now itemize. These are the sections. If you want to really improve in the ACT, these are the sections I'm going to suggest that you, that you pay attention to. Let's go quickly. Pitfall 1, using an incompatible subject and verb. Hear it incorrectly. John's ability to dribble and shoot prove he should be started. Listen to the explanation. Ability is singular, the verb prove is plural. Let's correct it. John's ability to dribble and shoot proves he should be started. If this is confusing, subject verb agree, right? Pitfall number two, shifting verb tenses. Hear it incorrect. The cop pulls me over and gave me a ticket. The explanation, the verb pulls is in the present tense, the verb gave is in the past tense, correct it? The cop pulled me over and gave me a ticket. Pitfall number three, using an incorrect verb form. After we brought, hear it incorrectly, hear it incorrectly. After we brought Steve the cake, he blowed out the candles. Of course, the explanation here is the past tense of the verb to blow is blue. Hear it correctly. After we brought Steve the cake, he blew out the candles. Pitfall number four, disregarding parallel structure. Of course, we've talked about this in earlier lectures, right? Hear it incorrectly. Many sports fans think that pro athletes are spoiled, selfish, and they earn too much money. The explanation, of course, items in a series should be stated in the same grammatical form. Hear it correctly. 
many sports fans think that pro athletes are spoiled, selfish, and overpaid. Pitfall number five, using the wrong word, a.k.a. faulty diction. Hear it incorrectly. The doctor first treated the passengers, which were most severely injured in the crash. Explanation. The relative pronouns who and that are used to refer to people, which refers to other things. Hear it correctly. The doctor first treated the passengers who or that were most severely injured in the crash. Pitfall number six. Using a mismatched pronoun and antecedent. We spent a lot of time talking about this, obviously, in earlier lecture, right? Hear it incorrectly. Budget cuts are forcing the library to reduce their hours. The explanation, the plural pronoun there improperly refers to the singular noun library. Hear it correctly. Budget cuts are forcing the library, singular, to reduce its singular hours. Pitfall number seven, making an ambiguous pronoun reference. Hear it wrong. The friendship between Joan and Jane fell apart after she went away to college. Explanation, question. Who went away to college? Hear it correctly. The friendship between Joan and Jane fell apart after Jane went away to college. Pitfall number eight, making a faulty comparison. Hear it wrong. Steve's score on the ACT was better than Charlie. Explanation. We want to compare Steve's ACT score with Charlie's ACT score, not with Charlie. Hear it correctly. Steve's score on the ACT was better than Charlie's score on the ACT. Pitfall number nine, connecting sentences with commas. Incorrectly, hear it and see it. The Warriors played hard, comma, they won the game. Of course, the explanation here is, we've got two full sentences, independent clauses, joined only with a comma. Again, only is the appropriate point here. We call this a comma splice. Hear it correctly and see it correctly. The Warriors played hard, comma, and they won the game. Or, the Warriors played hard, semicolon, they won the game. Pitfall number 10. Using unrelated sentence parts. Hear it incorrectly. Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin, and who did so during the final years of the 18th century? The explanation, of course, the first clause of the sentence states a fact about Eli Whitney, the grammatical subject. The second clause, beginning with and, adds a piece of relative information, but its construction is not grammatically related to the first clause. Let's say it correctly now. Eli Whitney invented the cotton gin during the final years of the 18th century. Pitfall number 11. Misusing semicolons and commas. Incorrectly, hear it. Lucy wrote a children's story, semicolon, which her little sister adored. The explanation, don't use a semicolon as a comma substitute. Hear and see it correctly. Lucy wrote a children's story, comma, which her little sister adored. Pitfall number 12, misplacing modifiers. Hear it incorrectly. The house stood on the corner, which was painted red. The explanation, put the modifier in the right place. Hear it, see it correctly. The house, comma, which was painted red, comma, stood on the corner. Pitfall 13, dangling participles, a.k.a. dangling modifiers. Hear it incorrectly. Running to biology class, comma, the bell rang before Jake arrived. Of course, the explanation here is a participle is a verb form ending in ing in the present tense and is used to modify a noun or a pronoun, right? Here, the participle running is meant to modify Jake, but it modifies Bell instead. Let's hear it correctly and see it correctly. Running to biology class, comma, Jake heard the bell ring before he arrived. Pitfall, pit, pitfall 14a, writing an incomplete sentence, lacking something, a noun subject, doing something, a verb predicate. Hear it incorrectly. The warrior football season of ups and downs. Whoa, 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 explanation. This looks like a sentence, but there is no thing, a subject, doing something, a verb. Hear it correctly. The warrior football season had its ups and downs. Pitfall 14b, continue. Running sentences together. Hear it incorrectly, see it incorrectly. Warrior football is great, when, uh, wor warrior football is great, we win every game. The explanation, of course, is this is a run-on sentence. Two full sentences joined with, get together with no punctuation. Hear it correctly. Warrior football is great, semicolon, we win every game. Pitfall 15, shifting pronoun person. Hear it incorrectly. If you apply to the state university, I should hear from the admissions office within a month. 
Of course, the explanation here is simple. The sentence starts out using the second person pronoun you and then shifts to the first person with the pronoun I. Hear it correctly? If you apply to the state university, you should hear from the admissions office within a month. Pitfall 16, choosing the wrong pronoun. Hear it incorrectly. Between you and I, this party is bad. Uh-oh, remember your explanation here. The pronoun I is in what we called, again, remember the nominative case. It may be used only in the grammatical subject of a sentence. On the other hand, a pronoun in a phrase that begins with a preposition, like, be like between, must be in the objective case. Hear it correctly? Between you and me, this party is bad. Pitfall 17, misusing coordinate and or subordinate clauses. Incorrectly hearing. During the game, Steve got hurt, but it caused a delay in the game. Of course, the explanation, the word but is the wrong word. Hear it correctly. During the game, Steve got hurt, and it caused a delay in the game. Fall 18. Wordiness. Hear it incorrectly. Due to the fact that Steve got injured, the game had to be called. The explanation here is, of course, to reduce useless words. Hear it correctly. Because Steve got injured, the game had to be called. Pitfall 19. Faulty idiot. Hear it incorrectly. Listening at the radio kept Jimmy from falling asleep while driving. Of course, at, the explanation, is in formal grammar. Hear it correctly. Listening to the radio kept Jimmy from falling asleep while driving. Pitfall 20. Misusing adjectives, adverbs. Hear it incorrectly. John spoke sharp to Jill. Of course, the explanation, adverbs, not adjectives, modify verbs. Hear it correctly. John spoke sharply to Jill. Pitfall 21. Mixed sentence construction. Hear it incorrectly. Ashley's ambition to be a lawyer and intends to go to law school after college. Of course, the explanation. Correct the oversight with a compound sentence containing two subjects and two verbs. Correctly. Ashley, comma, who aspires to be a lawyer, there's your subordinate clause, intends to go to law school after college. Pitfall 22. Shifting noun and pronoun numbers. Hear it incorrectly. Reading to children every day encourages them to grow up as a literate, book-loving adult. Of course, the explanation, both nouns and the pronoun should be consistent in number. Hear it correctly. Reading to children every day encourages them to grow up as literate, book-loving adults. Pitfall 23, using awkward language. Hear it incorrectly. Although it's being informative, the film ignored the basic causes of alcohol abuse. Explanation, revise the awkward phrase, although it's being informative. Hear it correctly. Despite its informative content, the film ignored the basic causes of alcohol abuse. Finally, Pitfall 24, shifting from active to passive sentence construction. Hear it wrong. Cindy yearns to go to an out-of-state private college, but the tuition is unable to be afforded by her family. Of course, the explanation, the first clause is written in the active voice, the second in the passive. Write it all as active. Let's hear it correctly. Cindy yearns to go to an out-of-state private college, but her family can't afford the tuition. Okay, so there you guys go. I wish you the best of luck on the ACT. Proper practice is the key, as we've said repeatedly in these lectures. Be positive and excited to take the ACT, and let's get a better score, shall we? Thank you for your time and attention.